we're gonna we're gonna work on a, a larger variation of the smoke and mirrors here. This one is built um, on a three aught setup on a three aught sixty degree jig hook platform. Really good hooks. There's a, new, a number of brands who make them in this size, um, and we've got two joints as well. So we've got two portions um, on the back, and that gives you a really nice flowing action. And then when the fly hits the bottom, it's cool because it, the tail stands up and wiggles also very light so they really move well um, on this I've got the large the quarter inch dirty dumbbells here with a large cone head on the nose um, this is meant to get down quickly and in a lot of places where either sight fishing or heavy cover that's good um, sometimes you don't see the fish until it's too late for a normal fly to sink down to so you can throw this guy you know I would recommend at least an eight weight I've done it on the seven um, for high water on the Yellowstone and um, even on the big hole in the Jefferson where you've got a lot of hydraulics and you just need a little bit extra oomph to break through that um, so that's in you know we all like high water years we haven't had one in a couple so we're hoping that the snow keeps coming here um, and in that case you can throw something with a little bit more weighted eyes and that like I said that's gonna get you that difference between a foot under the surface and two or three feet under the surface which on a lot of these rivers is the difference between um, finding one and not finding one and oftentimes those are the places that produce some real monsters I typically would go down to more of a size one or a one knot if I was focusing on the trout. This is a one. I really like that hook there. And, you know, this would be more engineered for really big redfish, bass, um, saltwater game, pike, muskie, that whole kind of style. Um, and after you, it, once you've got it, if you tie them any bigger than this, they you, you don't really have the easy casting essence of it. And I found that other style patterns can maybe treat you a little better for, for muskie where you're really trying to get something that's in that. 10 plus inch category of fly. Um, first of all, we're going to start out. We've got we're going to do our two tail pieces. We'll start with our final tail piece, and on that, take one of our wire shank forms here, bend, and cut to length. So, and the reason why I'm cutting these is because they turn into a little bit of a death spike back there if you don't cut it, and then. Cutting it and bending it allows it to hold in the vise well as well as keep the fly together um, for the long haul. These are, you know, these are not streamers outside of a few wild instances that that take a couple nice strikes and then all of a sudden are no good anymore. They might even get better as they go on, um, and that's part of their design. But also, you know, proper components and gluing and using the right materials and heavy thread. Um, we're going to start, we're just going to do kind of like we did with the smaller one, but we're going to do bigger twin tails, so we're going to tie in our first twin, in this case on the camera side. And then I'm just going to double this piece of lateral scale back over. And the, the colors of lateral scale that I really like for tails are the, the pink, um, and then the smoke. This is the smoke here, I really like how this sits in flies that are, you're looking to do more of a white... Um, silver style. In this case we're going to be tying the silver one, the Cisco Kid, and this is a fly that has been good for folks in eastern Montana um, on Fort Peck both for big smallies and for the pike. Um, and silver is noted on the Yellowstone um, especially in the spring for getting big browns. And on this guy I, want the, I don't want the tails to be too long. Remember we want the marabou tips to go just a little past these guys so we're going to go at about two inches. That's going to leave you with a little bit of flash there. We'll set him aside, maybe find a home for him and another fly at a later day. And we'll get our twin tails going back. We want them to kind of V back together like that. So you can do the grandma with the ribbon trick with the fingernail to get those to go in the right direction. Um, when we're building the tail on these bigger ones, we obviously want a bigger tail. Um, we don't want it to be too crazy. We still want to make sure that whatever predator fish we're going after is convinced that it's a fish, being the tail being nice and sparse, nothing too crazy, you know, possible rapid movement. Um, I, I think a lot of refusals stem from a fish seeing the fly, seeing the lure, whatever it is, and getting up to it and realizing the portions are simply askew and on some places that might not matter however on other places where the fish see a lot of pressure 
um, I think that can definitely lead to a lot of flashes, a lot of bumps, whereas you might have had a more aggressive strike with a properly portioned tail. So once again, we've we've detipped this this marabou quill feather, and I've got a little bit more material here. It's not a ton more than I would use on a smaller one. We're going to even those out a little bit. Once again, we are going to be doing the reverse roll wrap on this, so we want to make sure we got plenty of length when we eye out for the first cut. Flip it back around, wrap back to here, and then using your vice hand, pinch the butts, let it roll around the hook or around your uh, your streamer shaft here, and we've got a good deal there. So we're gonna part that into two ways, fold them back. Okay. And now we've got a nice, clean, sparse tail started here. Okay, so we're going to round up a couple inches of this silver UV polar chenille. Nothing crazy here. Lash it in, grain going backwards. Wrap up once we've attached it. And then as we move through here, don't be scared to let a little bit of that red thread base shine through. Um, we're just going to work our way up. Watch that sharp point of the wire form. We're just kind of keeping it organized as we go forward. Right up to the eye here. Um, and these these ultralight streamer shafts are great because you get a really big eye so it moves very freely and then you get a lot of room to work with behind it. Um, before I finish it off I am going to trim this down and in this case since we're tying a pretty big one we are gonna we're gonna leave it a little longer than we have in the past however this is the caboose of the fly so we don't want it to be too thick once again cutting at an angle back here and that's going to continue our really good profile and hopefully get us a few more fish a little taper to it okay once again red ice stub And on this, retrace our thread base, throw your half hitch in, and smother in super glue. I like to get that thread across the glue base there and then trim it, leave about an eighth of an inch tag end. Okay, so our tail or our caboose of our, of our fly is ready to go. Watch the fingertips on the super glue. Okay. So now we're going to move on and this is going to be the same size we've cut we've cut to here. And pop that in the vise. This one's a little trick here cuz we'll be adding wire. When you're putting these in the vise, you want to make sure to um, get the get the shaft straightened out with the thread here. You can see I've got them now. I've got them worked to where they're just stacked. If I get them askew, it can tie weird. So, got some super glue in the eye here. So give me just a second. Okay, we're good. This one. Um, so same style we were doing earlier, or we did on the smaller version the size 4 when we create the joint. Double that over. Slide your bead down. Then on what the bead does, the bead is going to come off when you fish it. It's going to break off on a rock or something. But between the time you tie it and the time you fish it, the bead will create memory in the wire. And it'll create a little loop for the for the back half to move around on or in this case the back third. Um, so the bead, while it may not um, last very long, it does serve a really good important part and that's keeping that loop nice after it's broken, it'll create the memory. Um, I've used all types of beads in these joints over the years, including I, when I first started I was using like a glow bug bead or a, you know, what you see a lot of folks tying with and I'm not terribly thrilled about them especially in pressured places I just think they they look too weird and 
have an, an unnatural look to them um, in the water. You can you can spot those beads from a mile away, and that's with my poor vision. So I really like the clean, tidy effect of this little red wire and red bead look. Um, on this guy, we're going to do a little underskirt of bucktail. And we don't want it to go more than halfway down this tail. We've got orange here. It really, really looks good against the silver. And a little trickier with this joint back here. So we have to kind of, when we go to roll wrap it, it can take a little bit more tweaking to get that full 360 on there. Keep that in the vise. Okay. Just going to work it around. Okay. And this will look quite a bit cleaner once we get it out of the vise. If we can get it out of the vise. Okay. So we did a little marabou or a little bucktail underskirt there and we're going to go with a little marabou overskirt. Once again, cut the tip out of the marabou feather. Get down to your core fibers here and we're just going to take a small chunk. Looks like some of them, this side's a little shorter so what you can do is you can kind of grab the longer side first and then you stroke it back and they'll even up real nice. Okay. We've got it cleaned up. Roll wrap your silver marabou here and get our skirt finished up. Okay. All right. Once again, back to the UV polar chenille body here. And you'll probably need three or four inches on this section. Um, some of the the UV colors in the UV polar chenille are really great, um, especially the ones that have a little silver, a little copper, a little gold in them. And then the new polar reflector flash has added a whole nother batch and filled a lot of spots in the color wheel of the UV polar chenille that kind of doesn't have that thick style of, of base to it. Um, so that's exciting. In, in particular, yellow, black, purple, there's a blood red, an olive brown, some really awesome new colors in that. Okay, so we tied those ones. We trimmed them maybe, maybe a little more than half, so we're going to trim this section even less. A little, little taper to it. Finish off with our UV red ice dub. Okay, quick half hitch, followed by copious amounts of super glue. Um, to me, that's like probably something funky like. Uh, All right, so now we've got our back two thirds section done, and perfect. Now we're gonna get ready, and I think we'll do. I'm gonna strap that onto a one on up here, and this will be a this will be a fly I look forward to throwing on the Yellowstone maybe next week, um, but I am gonna put the big eyes on it, and I think we'll do we're gonna go with the blue, and there's a little different deal once you've got the cone nose on the front. I love adding the cone nose to these flies, and what it does outside of adding the weight to it, it makes the fly very aerodynamic. So you add a little weight to it, but you don't necessarily see um, any issues in the casting side of it. And it, it adds weight, it sinks well, it helps the aerodynamics. So um, outside of cases where you want the fly to be light, like these little size fours, you know, like with a spay rod or a four or five or a six weight, adding the cone on the nose of these can really, really help. Um, first thing we'll string our cone on there and we'll just we're not going to mess with him the last thing we do will we'll be with the cone so get our hook and our vise here start our thread base and when adding the cone nose the first difference is where you tie the dumbbell in at and 
I'm gonna make a little thread bump, but I'm not gonna make it up by the elbow because I want the cone to sit right there with the dumbbells like that. Um, if the cone is down here by the eye, it won't have the um, it won't have it it planing right, and it will change the way it swims and casts. So we want to make sure those dumbbells are tied back on the hook to allow that cone to sit on the actual shank of the jig. Once the weight gets up here, it's not going to fish like a jig, and this fly fishes really well at hook point up and almost never does it get askew. Um, however, if that cone ends up by the eye, it can definitely cause it to do some twisting and some odd stuff there. So we're going to attach our nice big quarter inch dirty dumbbells here. And these, you're going to want a 7 weight to cast this, and you're, you're really probably going to want an 8 weight. Um, and, you know, the saltwater guys, they throw them on the 9 and the 10. So I've tied these in a little too close to the elbow. I can't get my cone all the way. So I'm going to back them up a little bit until I can get that cone sitting there snug. Yep, okay, good. And... Oops. Thread breaks. Okay. Get reattached here. No problems. I'm gonna do when we're attaching these eyes, if you've missed it in the in the smaller video starting I like to start my my series of wraps going diagonal three or four each direction followed by the helicopters followed by the anchor wraps on the actual shank um, those anchor wraps are really the ones that do it and prevent the fly from after you've broken the eyes free of their original spot um, if you don't have those anchor wraps they're never gonna hold back on there so what's cool about that is you can twist it back over and the fly will resume its fishing capabilities. Um, another change here with the cone is we're going to put a little an ice dub nose in front of the dumbbells here. And this is actually what we're going to glue the cone onto once it's done, if you can imagine. Gives it a surface to bite onto and keeps it there. Um, and event, you know, and after hopefully after you've caught a bunch of big fish, it'll break free and rattle around. But until then, it'll stay put nice and clean. Okay, we're going to prep our wire once again, string our rear, rear two-thirds on, okay, looking good, we're going to lash that on to the tire side of the hook, make sure you got the right spot, once again we don't need, oops, we don't need to break thread, but most notably, we do not need to do any wild attachment for these back portions because we are, we do not have any hooks back there. They don't. Uh, there's no pressure on it. We can keep them really light, and which for the fishermen that's good because they cast better and they move better in the water. Okay, so now we're ready to complete our head portion of the of this oversized smoke and mirrors here and we will be needing our orange bucktail which always ends up on the floor okay we're gonna take a much bigger chunk here than what we have been doing still not a lot by most tire standards um, junk fibers out of there and we want this guy we want it to go past that back body but not um, past the second body but about to the eye of that tail section trim that and we're just gonna roll wrap it here nothing crazy we're not looking for any wild profile we're just looking for a little underskirt to keep our marabou um, and general profile of fly in line okay underskirt attached gonna once again go to our marabou this is a feather that's already oop, that feather is past its prime. So we're gonna grab a new one out of here. Once again, cut our tip out of there. We'll be saving that for a few minutes. Then we'll get our core fibers, which is what we really want here. And
get that stroked back. We've got our tips even. And we definitely don't want to tie all this in because that's going to be really bulky and going to make it hard to cast. So let's get our thread up in position. And we're going to roll wrap our marabou chunk right on there. We've still got a gap underneath, so we need to work some of that around. Okay. Alright. So we've got underskirt, overskirt, everybody's looking good. And here on this one, we're gonna we're gonna do a few more things and these bigger sizes, a lot of folks are using them for salt water, for predators, and what that means is teeth, either teeth from the fish or teeth from the from the pliers using to dig them out, which UV polar chenille is not very durable when compared to teeth of plier or teeth of fish. So we're going to toughen it up, and you can do this on any of your polar chenille flies, but I'm going to cut a nice big long section here, quite a bit bigger than I would normally use. I'm going to lash it on, on the side and enter our durability factor. 20 pound fire line and we want a section just a little bit longer than we just cut in. And we're going to lash it in on the same side. Okay. So now we're going to attach our rubber legs and I've got these I do seven on these big ones, um, whereas we do three on the small ones. Seven seems to be a good number to tie clean and not get too bulky. I've got these cut to two and seven eighths inches, so that's how wide we're going to get with the fly. Um, lash it right onto the top using X wraps, not tight, just with the bobbin weight. Very nice. I'll be pulling back just a fraction. Okay. All right, now we're ready to beef this thing up a bit. So hold your, you got your polar chenille, your fire line here. And I grab the tips of the UV polar chenille and start spinning. And you'll want to kind of keep these straight as you do it. Give yourself some spins. And you'll have to spin it again once you get halfway forward. So once you've got it sorted, we can start wrapping forward with it. Okay, I'm scared to let a little red shine through. Alright, and you'll get a couple of these rogue fibers going here, and that's okay. No worries. Okay, we're due for another spin. Just gonna keep wrapping forward. And we're getting up to the point where it can get a little congested, so. Remember, we're going to retrace the X wraps on those rubber legs. So we're going to pass the legs on the shank underneath, come back over the top for the first X, or first part of the X, and then come back over the top once again for the other part, putting us back in oh, putting us back in front of the rubber legs and in between the dirty dumbbells. And now we're going to get a few more nice wraps here of our of our body material get a good pinch on that right there followed by a series of really nice tight wraps if you have any UV polar chenille left you can keep wrapping with it here finish it off but don't worry about that power pro sticking up okay so we've used all our polar chenille and here's the part that really locks it all down we're gonna take your pliers get a hold of the power pro Pull that nice and tight, wrap down, fold it back, and cut. And that Power Pro in there is going to make that UV Polar Chenille virtually bulletproof and it can withstand a lot of abuse, whereas previously if this thing got wrenched on with pliers or a big toothy fish it was going to be impacted if not done. Um, do a little trimming here, not a lot because we want a nice big profile. Um, yep. All right. And here we want nice, good, 
thick tip feathers for this. Um, we've got our marabou tip that we cut out earlier. And on this one, I'm gonna. We want it to be. We tie it in just a little longer than that rubber leg here, and we're gonna tie it in on the far side, going backwards. Fold it forward, pull it back, tie it on the side. Take a quick look. Maybe a little wide, but I think that's gonna be good right there. And we will need another, you want a good robust one for these bigger versions. This one's got a lot of a lot of clout to it here, so we're gonna trim him down. Once again, this one a little bit easier. Save it for last, tie it on the portion of the hook closest to you, fold it down and around. Okay. Now we're cooking, people. Just gonna work on our final step here, the ice dub collar. Okay. Collar done. Looking good. Toggle a little bit here. Throw your half hitch in. And then what's... We did that big clump of ice up in front of the eyes earlier, so we want to make sure we get plenty of the glue on there. That should be okay. So we got a good base. I'm gonna pop the cone right down on the nose. Lock it to where you want it and let it sit and watch your fingers. Now we can split all our legs here and all right. Be careful when you're doing any movements around there. There's a lot of glue on there and it will for the most part dry pretty quickly but it does not set. You want it to set good and proper hopefully overnight but not always and we added a little orange to this one but we've got one of the more popular colorways out here imitating the Cisco so silver blue a little orange in there ready to go double jointed really good jig hook platform um, ultra wide profile cast pretty light this casts really well on an 8 weight um, can be done on a 7 up to maybe a certain distance but it's ready to go ready to sink a little faster for you and hopefully get you a nice big hog this season.